a time to reflect in the middle of this tournament on something extremely special. And we have Rowan Barrett, general manager of the Canadian men's basketball team, played for Canada at the 2000 Olympics. And of course, father of RJ Barrett joining us this morning. Uh, Rowan, how's it going this morning? Uh, it's going great right now. And the story of my life, I'm in the gym, all right, because <laughs> we still got a job to do here. Mm-hmm. But uh, Definitely a great time for, for basketball in Love Canada. For sure. Yeah, it is. It's a very special time. Today's back to school, and I know you have uh, probably a lot of memories of this special day, get the kids going, but uh, this is a different uh, a different morning. I'm sure it's been a different couple of days for you, seeing something really special with this team, the point of pride, the level of, um, I guess, uh, reflection that you've had seeing what Canada did this weekend to clinch a return to the Olympics. Uh, how have you been reflecting? You know what? I, I try not to do too much. I mean, obviously, we, we're still in the middle of competition and we got to get some stuff done here. Right? We have history here. Um, the opportunity uh, to, to hit the podium here, right? It's never been done um, in a World Cup here on the men's level. You know, this is an opportunity. But I, I will stop to say that, you know, I think back to starting Junior Academy back in 2012. Mm. And sorry, sorry, guys. Like I said, I'm in the practice. I'm in the practice about to start. That's all right. Um, <laughs> And, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, with, with 11 and 12-year-olds, you know, and, and now I'm looking at some of those players that we started with all the way back then, now on the court for us, right? Like, I remember watching Shea Alexander walk in the gym at 16 years old, long and skinny, these arms that went for days, you know, and we we're trying to figure out, okay, what position does he play, you know? Okay, let, maybe let's put him over here. Let's put him over there. Like, I remember all of that. And to now watch these athletes grow and build and, and, and commit themselves to our country is an awesome thing because our team goes as far as our players want to take it. Mm. I manage and steward this program. I lead this program, okay? But this program, it's our players' program. When our players decide that they don't want to see people trampling on our flag, they commit, and this is what happens, right? And so I'm excited. Like, I am excited, and uh, I'm hungry for more right now. Yeah, I can hear the pride uh, in your voice for sure. You made a lot of uh, Canadians proud when they officially clinched. And to your point, there's a, a lot more here on the table at the FIBA World Cup. Um, in RJ's scrum uh, after the game against Spain, the reporters asked him what he he's, did the gritty. He's, he did do the gritty walking <laughs> up to the to the scrum for sure. Uh, but they asked him what he's going to say to you, and he said uh, he's going to say, "Dad, I'm the second Barrett to go to the Olympics." So taking off the GM hat for a second, as a parent, how proud are you that he's a part of this team and that he'll get to share that experience like you did? You know, obviously you're going to be proud, right? When you see your children um, have dreams and you see them achieving those dreams, you know, you're excited for them. You're, you know, you're proud. Uh, you, you have all these types of feelings, um, you know, but there is still competition, right? Because he said that he feels now that his jersey should go above mine in the house, <laughs> right? And I, and, I, and I said, wait a minute, right? Let, let, we, you got to perform to get that, right? Like you've got to beat our position mm. in the Olympics where we landed to get that. So, you know, still some competition and something on the line there in the home. Uh, that'll be a, a nice image. I'm sure we'll see it on social media with the two jerseys hanging there um, sometime after next year's Olympics. Uh, but let's talk about the amount of players that aren't on the court right now that have been a part of this honor. Um, you know, the roster that performed this past weekend and is still performing at the FIBA World Cup deserves a lot of credit. But when you look at the amount of years of legwork and hard work and trials and tribulations that Canadian basketball players have gone through, are there anyone in particular that you think about that has helped this program get to this level that you know isn't getting the praise right now because they're not on the court but couldn't have done it without them you know i, I mean I, it's hard i can't mention one name because there's so many mm-hmm. just even look at the process to qualifying right we have games in november and february that we play to even qualify to get here none of our nba players are playing during that time right it's all the guys that are overseas flying their trade right where 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 most canadians don't see that have got us here Right and understanding, many of them understanding, I'm going to help a team qualify, and I'm not even going to get a chance to play in the World Cup or the Olympics probably. But you know what? I'm going to do my duty. Right? I'm going to push us as far as I can forward. Right? And then another group of guys are going to come and carry the baton. Right? And then also we said, you know what? But some of you guys will get a chance to play on this team because we didn't want to build an all-star team. Right? Of just all NBA players, we wanted to build the best team. Right? And so if you're going to do that, that means Somebody's got to muck it up under the board, right? So somebody's got to play some defense and get down and dirty. Mm-hmm. Somebody gets the responsibility to shoot, right? But, like, somebody like Luke Dort, you think he cares if he ever shoots the ball? Like, 
he's thinking like I am gonna maul you, you know. And um, I think that when we have our NBA guys in there, you also have the European guys in there thinking, you know what? Maybe for some guys, I'm sitting waiting for my opportunity and I'm cheering like heck on the bench and I'm reminding somebody of his assignment on the court, right? And that's what we have now. We don't have all NBA guys. We have a mixture with other players that did help us get here that were playing in November and February. So I believe there was over 30 athletes that helped us qualify during this process. And uh, this team is now standing on the shoulders, you know, of, of, of those guys at this moment. So uh, our program's going really good. I think the, the culture is the right one. Guys, don't forget that maybe five weeks before we started, you know, we changed coaches. Right, we, we have to change coaches. Yeah. I have to bring in a whole new coach here. But I think it speaks to the culture and the commitment of our players that we could switch gears, bring in a new coach five weeks out, and still accomplish the task. And right now, still looking for more. Yeah, well, why don't you take us through the decision to bring in Jordy Fernandez? Because by, by all accounts, he has done a remarkable job in such a short amount of time here. And I think probably Nick Nurse deserves a, a lot of credit for getting the team to this point. But it feels like Jordy now has been able to take them over the top and clinch a spot in the Olympics, which has uh, been a long time coming. So just, just speak to bringing Jordy in and the decision to, to have him be the guy to lead this, this team. Well, well, you know, look, when I saw there, there were some rumblings of some potential trouble with, uh, with Nick in Toronto, you know, I started getting on the hunt, right, just in case. Uh, and, you know, I, I looked all around the world. I had many conversations with many coaches kind of all around the world and just kind of stood pat and waited and just kept communicating with Nick. How are we doing? What's going on? I, you know, I'm good. I'm still coming. Everything was good. And then the moment when he said he couldn't do it, um, I had already gone, gone down to like three candidates by that point. Did all my interviewing and did all that. And the second he said he was out, I think within four or five days, we had the new coach signed. And so, uh, you know, for us, you know, it was really, really important to have someone that under first, that understood how to handle NBA players. It's a very big thing that I cannot overstate. If you don't know how to handle them, it won't matter what you're saying. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how great your technical ability is. If they smell that you don't understand them, they will tune you out. Mm -hmm. And so we had to get somebody that had experience and understanding in that, but then also dually have a tremendous understanding in FIBA, right? And Jordy is somebody who is Spanish, grew up in FIBA. His formation is in this game. He understands the referees. He understands the crowd. He understands the style of game of the different teams. And when you think about it in the end, we have to go through Spain, the world number one, to qualify. Okay? Who better to help us do that than somebody who was actually on their staff a few years ago, right? Knows all the players, knows the coach, knows his tactics, knew everything. And I think it was definitely a competitive advantage for us, right? And we needed all of it to get past Spain. And so, uh, you no, know, definitely it's been a good hire. Things are working really, really well. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, for us, our objective has been to get better every day. And we had two goals here. We've accomplished the first one, and we're back at work trying to get the second one done. Yeah, it looks like Jordy Fernandez has uh, definitely learned how to push the right buttons quickly with this team, flipping the script mid-game. Uh, we see the huddles. They're full of passion, and the guys are certainly responding well. Uh, we're chatting with Rowan Bear, general manager of the Canadian men's basketball team. So you mentioned achieving half the goal. So check one box. There's still one massive one uh, looming. But I wonder if, in your perspective, that this might like help Canada feel like, okay, we can focus on what's at hand. We've done the big thing. We're going to Paris next year. Like Book the flights. No problem. But is this going to give them a little bit more of uh, maybe like a looseness, like a focus, a dialed in on what's at, at hand here? Uh, maybe help getting one hurdle all the way just helps you dial in on the FIBA World Cup and what's ahead. Well, well absolutely. Look, look, I'm already talking to teams about exhibition games next summer, mm. right? And so, like, you know what I mean? We're already on it. Uh, uh, you know, most of my work is done by the time we get here, right? Once we get into camp, I, you know, the coach takes over. I step back and I let the coach control his environment and have autonomy within his environment. If I see something that needs correcting, you better believe I step in there and make sure that happens. But for the most part, our team, our culture, our operations people, they're grinding it. And, uh, look, I loved it when I was playing, right? You're on the court two, three hours a day, right? Then you go back, you relax, you lay down. Not in this job, right? You're not in this job now, right? You're going all the time. So we're already looking forward I definitely think it helps Michael Bartlett, our president and CEO, 
he's just done a tremendous job helping us to build this and uh, the treatment of our athletes, the way that we fly, the you know the places that we stay, just all the things that he's been willing to do, work and lock and step with us. Now he has a full year to go after the sponsors. And look, we need the corporate community to step up here. All right, we've got Canadian boys that are out here putting their lives on the line. It feels like for some of them, you know what I mean? Because if you get hurt, right, like. You know, you go back to your team, maybe they recruit over you, they put somebody over you, you lose your position, right? And you guys are out here giving it. They're committed, they're in, they're performing. Now we need Canada to help us, right? You know, we've had Own the Podium helping us, which has been great. We've had some sponsors, Sun Life and some others that have jumped in, and the Keg and a number of other sponsors that have helped us. But but to, to do what it is that we're trying to do, the teams that we're trying to play against, the level of support that they have still dwarfs ours, right? And so if you really want to compete at the top level and say you really want to beat these teams, well, you've got to be able to prepare like they do or better than they do, right? And this is where the support comes in, the financial support, hopefully from our corporate community. And Bart, you're, you're right, Bart that will and our team will have a year here, right, to, to, to go after it. They're not saying, hey, maybe we, we'll do the qualifier, and if we get through that, then maybe no. Everybody knows we're going. Look, I've gotten calls and messages from CEOs and presidents of different companies, so I know that they're thinking about it. And, and I definitely think, you know, getting this out of the way and, and, and qualifying hopefully gives our organization, you know, a good long run of finding the support that we'll need um, to, to meet our lofty goals um, at the Olympics. You've been the general manager since 2019 and the assistant general manager prior to that. When you and your staff are now sitting together in a room and you're trying to decide, you know, what is the ceiling here for this group? When you look at whether it's the FIBAs or eventually getting into the Olympics, when you look at those two tournaments, what are the goals? You put it on the whiteboard. This is what we want to accomplish. What are they? What is the number one thing that you, I would presume that the getting back to the Olympics was number one. But I also think you probably have goals that are higher than that. So what are they? Well, I, you know, I do think, first of all, <clears throat> if you're going to ever win, you have to be competitive. And so any event that you know, our country uh, enters into with me here as a general manager, we're entering into win. You know, that's our first thing. Like, we want to win. Um, I, I do think that uh, with here, obviously, because of the whole structuring within FIBA, uh, you, know, you need to qualify so that you can get a chance to win. And so obviously we had more than one goal. Winning is a part of that. Getting onto that podium and making history for our country, you know, is big. Uh, you know, I do also think that how we do it is very important, right? Because we have an opportunity to inspire people when we play, right? You, you, you have to be involved in something that's bigger than yourself, right? Look, our, look I mean, Shea, I think his contract 170-something million, right? And Jamal, you know, these guys, RJ over 100 million, like, you know what I mean? I think what you get is over 80 million. Like, like these guys are very, very successful people, right? Why are they here? It's, it's not for money, right? And they play and get paid, but it's not for money. They don't get paid here, right? They're here because they want to be involved in something that's bigger than themselves. And they understand that they can use their ability to inspire others, impact people in our country. And so that's always something that's in the mind, you know? in terms of how we go about our business. Are we on time for every meeting, you know? Are we pushing and giving the best that we have because we understand there's going to be some kids like me, right? I was that kid. I was watching our team play in the Olympics, and it's when I realized it's the first time I thought, wow, you know what? I could do that for my country. And it, I was running track. I was playing football. I was doing all these different things. But when I saw that, I said, man, I'm playing basketball, mm -hmm. right? I was inspired by what I saw. And so, you know, our guys understand that they have that responsibility, right? And they want to represent our country, you know, in the best way as well. And I think just lastly, from an organizational perspective, what am I always looking? I'm always looking at our culture, right? I'm always looking at our culture. And I think that, you know, I'll, you know, I'll let you in on it. For us, our mantra in this tournament has been body blows, right? In quotes, body blows, right? Like, People are looking at our team. They see all these NBA guys, and they're thinking, you know, wow, you know, they, they got this big all-star team. Look, we're number 15 in the world, mm. right? We're not, we're, not, we're not entering as some sort of conquering hero. We're actually the underdog here, right? That's the mentality that our guys came in with, not with some sort of prima donna, 
Like, we're underdogs here. Okay, we're not coming in like Mike Tyson with one blow and knocking you out, right? So it was body blows and body blows. That's how we were going to have to play so that you lower your arms so that we can give you that overhand right, you know, in in the 10th round or whatever it was. (laughs) So that's been our mentality, and I think that's what you saw with Spain, right? They had us on the, almost on the mat, right? Mm -hmm. And we just kept hitting them and hitting them and hitting them and hitting them, and finally they broke, right? And so that's kind of been our mentality here. Um, the Canadian grit and resilience, um, you know, is definitely on the mind here. And, uh, you know, we're hoping to go out there one more time tomorrow and, uh, you know, and get that going and make history again. None of our teams have ever finished higher than sixth in the World Cup in our history. Well, let's keep history making history for, for sure us. with, uh, with the right. Paris Olympics, yep. a check one box off, but uh, still a lot at hand here in Canadian team. You mentioned it is great culture, but they've had that relentlessness, that fight. Um, it seems like uh, they're the team rolling with the momentum going into these important games ahead. Uh, Rowan, really appreciate you coming on. Congratulations on part mm-hmm. one of this story, but I know there's a lot to be written and um, I'm sure you guys will, will be uh, ready to celebrate when this is all done um, at the end of this tournament. So appreciate you jumping on and enjoy practice. We'll chat soon. Congrats, Rowan. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys.